so it ended up being I, I geez man i don't remember when it was canceled but it was late I, i'd say probably late january maybe yeah. early february um so i i talked to uh you know this this to jimmy and um you know, you could tell with his Italian accent, but you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking that what, what, what's down the pipeline. And, um, so I ended up talking to him and my, my agent at the time was, uh, was Scott Norton. And, uh, so I go, uh, Jimmy goes, well, how much, uh, what do you want to make? And I'm like, Oh, listen, man, like, um, I, I just appreciate the opportunity to come in and play. I'll, I'll pass you off to my agent. He he handles that. So my agent uh, calls him, and then he calls you back. He goes, "Rubber, where the f- where did you find this guy?" And I go, "What do you mean?" And he goes, "He goes like he told me first of all, like name your price." And he was like, "Like, hold on, Mister Galante, like I'm an agent, and I you don't really want to tell me that." Uh, so what do you think? What do you think's fair? And they were kind of going back and forth, and then so my agent Scott goes to me, he goes, um, I, "I don't really know what's going on, but like he wants to pay you cash." <laughs> And I'm like, what? Wait, wait, what do you mean? Like pay me cash? He goes, like, I, I literally think he wants to give you a duffel bag of cash. And I'm like, oh, all right. So I guess that would be the first, the first red flag, right? Like something's different here. But like, then again, like, think about it, guys. We were thinking back in the uh, major junior. I mean, how many of junior teams growing up? Like they guys were getting paid on the side to go you know i mean there wasn't anything out of the ordinary and you know that and i know the ohl there were some teams out there there hey give the guy 20 grand here you know he's gonna lease him a car or get a guy a car here and the intro in this documentary so you know they're looking for a a a goal score and i this is i I didn't get a preview of this this documentary i i watched it when everybody else did so they start showing the nhl lockout and they're talking about you know they his dad comes to him and I'm not spoiling anything, just says, get me a fucking goal score. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Oh man, I wonder, like, I don't know this part. Like, I wonder who they're going to get. I'm like, looking, <laughs> I'm watching the screen. Like what, what NHL player are they going after? Then they show my mug on there. I'm like, Oh gosh. And then my phone's blowing up from, you know, all you guys know I wasn't a goal scorer uh, when I played in the NHL. So everyone's giving me a hard time on that, but it was, uh, it was, it was fun to be revered as a goal scorer for a moment. Well, you could have fooled everyone watching the show because your first goal, you come in and go absolutely backhand roof. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they found the goal scorer they were looking for. I and, mean, <laughs> and, and to his credit to the, to AJ, you at that time, Rupert, you were a goal scorer. You scored the biggest goal the previous year. So did you, did you want to fight? Did you fight when you went there or you just went there to play like how'd that work for you as an nhl guy were guys trying to fight you or you had so many tough guys that you didn't have to worry about it so i went on uh when i was talking that was all part of the preliminary conversation with jimmy and i said hey jimmy listen i played in the minors and i know when a guy i spent three years in the minors and when a guy gets sent down from the nhl like it's fair it's it, it he's a target right like i'm gonna go challenge him even if at that time when i was in the american league i wasn't really much of a fighter but it was my opportunity to whether it's go one-on-one and try to beat him um, with, uh, you know, playing the game or just trying to fight them. And uh, I just said, listen, I'm going to come there. I want to play. Like, I don't want to come there and just be a target every night. And this is before I knew what the team was made out of or made of, I should say. And he goes, <laughs> he's on the phone. And he goes, Michael, I want you to hang up the phone when we're done here. I want you to go on our website and I want you to look at our <laughs> roster. He goes, J- let's just say nobody will even look at you. And I'm like, what's this guy fucking? I'm like, what's he talking about? So I hang up the phone. I go on the website. And, you know, this is late January. They're probably 50, 50 some games into their season. They had six guys over 200 minutes in penalties. They had a couple guys over 300. Well, there was a, a, a situation where Barry Melrose and Steve Levy owned the Adirondack team. And um, somebody, you know, that was, it was the talk of, minor league hockey at that time where you know there's a there was a group of people that were saying this is an embarrassment to hockey there was another group that were like this is the best thing since slap shot in the 70s <laughs> with the broad street broad street bullies and so it started getting some garnering some attention and barry made a comment and i talked to barry when uh when i worked with him and at the nhl network a couple of times and he, we laugh about it now it's hilarious but barry made a comment um on i don't know what it was on some platform or, or radio and, and said they uh, yeah these guys down in danbury have got tony soprano running the team <laughs> Jim, jimmy jimmy told me this and he goes nobody you say something like you know nobody talks about us like that and, and we're gonna we'll, we'll take care of that so 
he they made like a vow every time they were playing this Adirondack team, it's going to be a shit show. And so, like I said, I gave them a schedule like every other weekend. So I'm on, I'm doing a three and three in Michigan. We're jetting around Michigan on the bus and I'm laying, I got my head against the window. You guys know this play and I got my head against the window sleeping, but you know, the seat behind me is right here. John Morasti is the seat behind me and he's leaning forward on his cell phone. And he starts talking like very, like trying to be secretive and talking quiet, but he's talking literally right in my, my ear. No one else can hear, but he's whatever. You know, yeah. He thinks I'm sleeping. And I hear this one-sided conversation that's like, <laughs> he goes, he's calling, I put it together later, he's calling Chad Wagner. I don't know if you know who Chad Wagner is, he's a Western boy, I think he's from, uh, maybe he's from outside Edmonton or something, and he's been banned from a, at least one or two leagues prior to this. He hasn't played hockey at this point in four years, and uh, so the conversation, Nasty goes, uh, hey Wags, it's Nasty, he's like, what are you doing, buddy? He's like, uh, what do you got going on next weekend? And he's just, you know, I don't hear anything for a second. He goes, ma'am, we need you to come in and play a game uh, in uh, Adirondack or come in uh, to our team and play a game with us next weekend. Oh, no, no, bro. They don't. Ca- I know. Listen, man, I'm not in shape either. I know you haven't played in four or five years. It's cool. They don't want you to. They're like, he's like, fuck, dude, they don't want you to play. They want you to come around, run around this. The owner of the other team's been. Run his mouth butter owner. They just want to send a message. Just come in here, run around, get on a plane, go back home, make some bucks. And uh, so I'm, I get off the bus and I go to a few of the guys. Like at the end of the weekend, I go, hey, uh, I'm not here next weekend. But, <laughs> boys, keep me posted what's going on. <laughs> Something's going down. And uh, so sure enough, this Chad Wagner flies in. I think he hasn't played hockey in, the, like they said, four or five years. He... Uh, I think he played three games, had three shifts. <laughs> and 79 minutes in penalties yeah, and yeah. expelled he got kicked out of the league up, so. got, i got him got pulled up here, right here. Up i got, got him pulled up rubber he had three games 75 pims for you guys but he's a san diego goal legend i guess and obi played for the goal is he this well this guy fucking i'm looking at his stats each year in san diego 45 games 503 pims Four, <laughs> <laughs> 43 games 521 pims Fi- uh, fi- That's oh, they, hard they, to do. Robert. Now he, he had a year in uh, Asheville for the Asheville Smoke. Fifty-eight games. He he managed ten snipes and four hundred and sixty-three pins. <laughs> this guy's a fucking legend. You know, He's from Calgary. You know, you know, you know your team's in for one when John Morasti. And everybody knows nasty when yeah. he's calling someone to come in and do some damage. <laughs> it basically was just attracting all the bloodthirsty hockey fans that are out there. And this place was nuts, man. I I remember our. In the game, I uh, oh, man, I I didn't uh, like I hit a guy with a hit, and I he didn't see me coming, and I I I got him good. He was he was out on the ice, and I'm you know you know how it is, guys. Like we've been in that position on one side, maybe getting hit, but then giving it, and you know it's a big hit, but at the same time, like I want to see the guy get up. Like I don't I don't want to see him laying there. He's yeah. like just laying there. <laughs> the crowd's going nuts and they throw they throw a body bag on the ice and it lands next to the dude who's knocked out i'm like what is go- I'm not- we're looking at each other on the bench like what is going on here they're they just throw in body bags like it's almost like a concert you know you see hitting beach balls around they're just tossing fucking body bags through the section and uh but they loved it section 102 man they were nuts and uh it was an atmosphere that's for sure uh, jimmy came up to me at one point and he goes michael what do you think of donald brashear I'm like, whoa, I mean, what do you mean? Like, yeah, he's an NHL guy, man. He's yeah, a big boy. He's, he's tough as nails. And he goes, what do you think about bringing him in? What if I bring him in? I'm like, yeah, I mean, Jesus, whatever. And, he, and I'm like, but just, you know, Jimmy, I mean, we got nine heavyweights, but like, I, I don't know. <laughs> How many need Jimmy? If, no one's going to fight Brash. They won't fight. Like, no one wants to play our team. You know what I mean? So, like, it ended up not working out. But, uh, man, they had this appetite to go out and get some boys. I mean, listen, Rupper, it, it was a great story. And when I saw you attached to it and, and you're a beauty. And, and the one thing at the end, though, about, you know, Winger, the guy you're talking about, Jimmy walks in the bar and you can see how emotional he was about it. So for people out there that thought it was a gong show or whatever it was, it obviously meant a lot to guys like that, to the community. Um, a very unique story, my man. And the fact that you were part of it and we do some work together, um, I, I thought it was hilarious.